Napa know how. Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 500,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Hi, you guys. This is Good Deeds, and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. I know you're having an awesome, a fabulous, a wonderful day. I know because you're in your purpose. No matter what you're looking at right now, it's actually better than you think. You know, we do have to go through ups and downs. We do have to go through trials and tribulations. The thing about it is when someone speaks into your life, you have to take that thing, and then you have to see if it, what we call, resonate with you, or it doesn't, meaning do you agree or you not agree, because <laughs> you know who you are, because you know what has been going on in your life. So just be mindful that some people will come to speak life into your life, and some people, they will not. Amen? Okay, we have to go there and say that. But I am Dr. Renee Sunday, and I am mobile, mobile, mobile. Y'all probably can hear the announcements in the back. You know, sometimes I'll be doing my thing in the airport, and that's what we're doing. <laughs> So, but you know what? We're still going to get this going because we're actually hanging out. And uh, the thing about it is, you no matter what's going on, you have to continue to walk in your purpose, right? And that's what we do here at Good Things. We help you shine your light to the world. And your light is your goals, your dreams, the reason you were born, and the reason you're here right now. The destiny that actually has been spoken over your life before you were even born. Guess what? So you don't have nothing to do with it, right? <laughs> so your purpose is actually for other people, okay? But I just love it. I just love it. We're just going to do the ask Dr. Renee question. They're going to hand it to me and let me know what that is. But, um, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh so y'all, I, I, my team is so funny. The question actually is, uh, Dr. Sunday, have you ever, you always say don't stop, get it, get it. But have you ever felt like you wanted to give up? Have you ever felt that you got weary and well doing? Have you ever felt that this wasn't your calling? And I, you know, I'm gonna be transparent. Y'all know I'm gonna be keeping 100. But uh, actually, everybody has done that, so I'm not excluding that. Because the thing about it is, I can, um, and you know, I'm a practicing anesthesiologist for 17 years. And let me tell you, in the medical field, it's more of a fact. F A C T. If I meet somebody and I say I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. Knock on wood, for 17 years, I have not had a patient refuse me doing the anesthesia. But in this coaching world, what I call actually corporate America, that's what I call corporate America, you know, coaching, you actually doing, uh, even even if you say ministry to a certain extent, uh, even when you're doing uh, your own business, people will watch you forever. I've had some clients that they've watched me for three years, then they purchase. And I'm like, wow, what if somebody, if I went try to do anesthesia with somebody, they say they won't wait three years to have a baby. <laughs> you know, you can't, the baby ain't going to stay in there that long, right? But it's, it's just so uh, interesting that uh, I had to go through that. But let me tell you, the thing about it is I couldn't give up because I had so many people around me in my inner circle that kept pushing me. They celebrated me and not just tolerated me. So, the thing about it, it may come in your mind, and I guarantee you it's going to come in your mind. But the thing about it is that's why I really, really believe in support from your inner circle, your support from your family. And if you don't have those, that's why our mental and coaches come into play because uh, that's what they're going to do. They're going to push you into – they're going to pour into you. Uh, a coach can be there for a certain period of time, and then a mentor – can be there for a lifetime. It's depending on what your season is. But that's what the that's how I answer the question. Of course, I went more in detail than the person asked the question because it was kind of that they were at that point. So we had to go in on that. Okay, we had to really go in and find out why they were actually had that feeling. But because we can't have that feeling because you actually have to be in your purpose. Because guess what? I'm in your <laughs> my purpose. <laughs> but we don't want to delay. We have an awesome, fabulous young lady with us today. You know, she is the student teacher, and um, I just love her spirit, how we talked in the, in the green room. But we're going to make sure that you actually get all the wonderful information from um, – she's going to help me with her name because I just got it just now. It's Simone 
Walden. Is that correct, sweetheart? Welcome to Good Deeds. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Renee. It's Simone. You are very close. It's Simone. Simone. All right. Welcome to Good Deeds. How you doing? I am well. How are you today? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. Now, we're not going to delay because she's powerful, ladies and gentlemen. And so tell us a little bit more about yourself and the amazing things that's going on in your life. Um, so my name is Simone. Um, I'm originally from North Carolina, and I live here now. In, I live in Maryland now. Um, I'm a teacher by, by vocation. I've been teaching middle school reading for about, this is my 14th year, and maybe a couple, maybe two or three years ago, I really um, just started to seek God on what it is he wanted me to do. And so um, just within the last couple months, I've become a a three-time best-selling author on Amazon. I have three uh, books out now that are published. Um, started my business as a student teacher this year. I'm taking this, my first book, Stand on His Words. We're on our tour now. So I have a third stop in Charlotte, North Carolina, on Saturday. Continue to write more books, go speak, coach, you know, minister, help people. I love to pray. Um, and so that's kind of who, who Seminary the Student Teacher is. Well, Simone, let me ask, so tell us a little bit about this because I, I just want to ask this this quickly because you do so many things and I get this question a lot as well. How do you create balance, if that is a word, number one, for you? And number two, how do you, you know, have the opportunity throughout the day to do all the things that you have been entrusted with? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question, Dr. Renee. Uh, really, I can say, and I know this may sound cliche, but it really is the grace of God. But outside of that, um, in the summertime, I was out of work, and so I spent a bulk of my time writing. And before that, I would, and how my first book came about is I used to do a prayer call on Sunday night um, at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, praying for the school system, and I would just write my prayers down. And then around December, the Lord, I want you to go on Facebook Live. And so we was going Monday through Friday, um, 6.45, a.m. Eastern Standard Time to about 7.15, and I was writing those prayers down. And so in the midst of me writing the prayers down, I didn't know those was going to be what was in the book. And so um, I would take spin when I came, when I got off, when I get off work, probably around like from 5 to 9 or sometime later, I devote my time to making sure I'm working on my business when I'm not, you know, at church or ministry or doing those things. But um, I think when you're really hungry for it and you know that's your fast, you kind of find a way. And so I've kind of been able to bridge the two because I know I'm called to the educational system. Every obstacle, every trial, every um, everything I encounter every day, I take it and I apply it to my business because I want to be able to go and help other educators that I see. So it's, it's almost like they both are going together right now. So, you know, I just have to, once I'm actually off of work, I can come home and, like, you know, implement those things, you know, that I need to implement for the business part. <laughs> well, I totally understand <laughs> what you say, you know, because I, I surprise myself sometimes because I sometimes I go from being an anesthesiologist to a media personality, and then I have a coaching call and all that in one day. But uh, God, as you said, God gives you the grace of doing that. But let, let's talk a little bit about, and I love how you said that because that has happened in my life too. A lot of things God calls me to do, I end up putting in a book. But tell us how. Um, with a best-selling author, I know that's exciting, but tell us a little bit more about your publication. Um, so the first book, I kind of explain how that came to be. Um, so I would just write my prayers down um, and my devotions. It's, a, it's called Standing on This Word. It's a prayer um, and devotional book for educators. So it's geared towards parents, those in the educational system, teachers, administrators, policymakers, um, you know, school bus drivers, anybody has a love for education. And the devotionals were just different things that I saw going on throughout the school years that I myself struggled and dealt with throughout the school year, and we just put it in the book um, so it could help people practical ways on how to really overcome and be a better person all around so you can ultimately become, <clears throat> excuse me, a better educator. And so um, that's how the first book came to be. And then with the second book, and I talk about a little bit of my testimony in the second book, but I was in a uh, in almost a, a, a fatal car accident in July. And after I, you know, 
got over all of that. And I was just telling the Lord, like, well, whatever it is you want me to do, I'll do it. And so I was able to write the second book within, you know, maybe two weeks and, you know, get it out. And so it first came out on ebook. Both of those books are on ebook. And then my third book came out September 29th, My Heart Under a Microscope. And just talking about all the relationships and all the things from a young girl up until um, now and how God has, you know, bought me out. And so those are how the books came to be. And so I hope I'll answer that question as as well as Oh, you you asked. did. You did. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, with being a best-selling author, um, you know, a lot of people out there want to achieve that accolade. Uh, can you say, cause it, cause can you say how, um, with that being said, does that push you, if you will, to actually write more, or or, or do you, <laughs> or, or again, you may have so many things you're doing that you may not have a chance to write. But tell us, has that been a stimulant to actually increase you in your writing? Uh, it, it has actually, Dr. Renee. Um, I'm on my. I just finished the cover to like literally before I called dialed into this. I literally just accepted my my fourth cover for my next book, and it's called Youth in Crisis. And, and the more I know, like, you know how the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, you know, there's a time to sow and there's a time to reap. And I believe this is my season where God is giving me seeds to sow, and this is my time to actually write. And so um, with the grace of God, by the end of the year, I hope to have my sixth book finished and completed. So the fourth book, I have the cover done. Um, my fifth book is almost done. I'm going to be working on the – um, cover soon, but it does motivate me because it's like, okay, now I know that people are actually interested in what I'm writing about. People are actually care to know, you know, what I'm saying, and so it pushes me out. And I know because I'm not doing it out of my own will and out of my own volition. Of course, you say things like, you know, I want to write a book and you want to do all these things, but once you see God actually make it happen for you, it's like, oh my gosh, like, God, this is for real. And so um, it does, it really pushes me to just continue to write as much as I can. So the more He gives me, the more I'm going to um, put, put, put out. Wow, I just love that. Now, you know the thing in regards of the student teacher, I just love that name. Tell us a little bit of how you acquired that name and how you actually stepping out with the different business model that you have. Okay, so maybe in like March, when I first, I'm, I've been in Maryland for this is my third year now. When I first came, I was excited about coming. But there's some things that transpired, and then I didn't want to come anymore. And so when I first came here, I was, like, kicking and screaming to go back to Charlotte. Um, I applied for jobs. For the first few months, I just really hated it. And so, you know, I decided, okay, Lord, you're not going to let me go back, so let me just make the best out of it. So I started taking a class here. I got me an accountability partner. Um, and that's one thing you talked about when we first came on, how, you know, if people don't support you, get your accountability partner or mentor, and, and I always keep one of those. And so I had a mentor, and she was really kind of helping me, and I was very, like, um, I was sad. I was lonely. I was going through so much stuff. And so I would just the only friend I had was really the Holy Spirit, who was God. And, you know, I would stay and I would read my Bible and I would study and I would stay up and I just started, like, making a lot of videos on Facebook. And maybe, like, a week before I went live, my first Facebook live was last April. And the Lord was like, you're the student teacher. And I was like, the student teacher? Like, I knew that I was a teacher by vocation, by trade. But he says, you're a student of my word. And then when I give you something, you go out and you share it with people. So I just started making videos after videos after videos, not really knowing that it was going to be like a business. And then in December, I had a one-on-one laser session with a lady here, and um, she took me through how to self-publish your books because I'm a self-published author and how to start your first business, how to start your own business. And um, I kept saying, look, like, what is it going to be? And he said, the student teacher. And so. That's where the student teacher came. So my 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 um my target audience is educators and parents and mothers and daughters, um, and I just want to be able to you know be what I consider myself as an accountability coach. You know, helping people, holding people accountable for the things, the goals, the aspirations that they have, and of course, always coming with biblical principles and biblical standards. So that's how the student teacher came to be. 
Well, I love it. I love to hear that because uh, my name, uh, the platform builder, came kind of interesting as well. But but let me, but but ladies and gentlemen, I just love how you how God orchestrated that because pretty much what you did was repurpose what you already had in your hands, and that's a lovely shout <laughs> about right there. <laughs> yeah, that's good right there, Doctor Renee. That's good. Oh, God, because a lot of times we want God to make a move. A lot of times we want him to, 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 to create, you know, download this, that, and that, as the kids say. But a lot of times, mm-hmm. a lot of times, most of the time, it's already a gift that's inside that needs to be stirred up. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's good. So let me ask you this, though, in regards of uh, where you are right now. Because if you look at the world, this, that, and that is happening. So when people have felt that they have lost hope, and you actually, uh, you're saying, let's, hey, get a mentor, get a coach, get an accountability partner. If people have that greatness inside, which they have, as you being a student teacher, how are you, you know, because of course in your business you're doing that, but how are you doing that? Because uh, the point I'm getting at is some people think the things that we have learned in church, okay, it stops at the church door and it doesn't go out in the marketplace. And you're a great example of that. And tell us how you merge those two together because it don't stop at the door. It continues on out to your business and the things you do at home and abroad. <laughs> yeah, exactly right, Dr. Um, Dr. Renee. And, you know, you know, the Lord has specifically told us that, you know, we are to go to say he came to save those which was lost and that he created us to be disciples. And so our job is to to take what we learn inside of the church is for believers to take that, to be strengthened, to have knowledge, and then to go share it with other people. And one thing that I'm learning, because I, I really had to learn it, like, really fast, was how to, the, you know, the scripture he, he gives is be wise as a serpent but harmless as a dove and you can give people bible you can give people jesus you can give people scripture and word all day long without them knowing that you're actually giving it to them and you know the greatest thing that the lord has told us to do is just to love people and when you love people and you're really sincere with them they will come to you for advice they will come to you for help you know they'll share their problems with you they don't even know why they're sharing their problems with you, and you done gave them scripture and word and they come back and say oh wow thank you that has helped me so much but i have learned how to infuse all of what i I believe because I had a lot of educators and teachers say, you know, well, you know, you can't talk about Jesus or Christ or you can't bring the church into the school system. You can't mix church and state. And I get all of that. But because the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of me, everywhere I go, he's there. So when I step into my classroom, he's there with me and he just gives me words and I study and I like the different translation of the Bible because it's very uh, plain taught that you can quote scripture to somebody and they don't even know that you're quoting scripture to them if they're not, you know, a student of the word. And so it's, it's easier than you think, but, of course, you have to get, like, strategy and stuff um, from God. But it's, it's people are just – people are hurting and people are looking for answers, and we just have to be those willing vessels when they come, even if we're tired, we got our own stuff going on, we don't want to be bothered, they've been through this crap to us, but you still have that willing heart and to, to allow them to pour – um, into you and tell you what's going on and you're able to pull back into them and ask God for strategy and you pray for those people and then they see in results. It, it's, it's really a, a good feeling at the end of the day. I totally understand that. Yes, yes, yes. Because people ask me all the time, when do I say Minister Dr. Renee Sunday? And when I say Dr. Sunday, I say really and truly you can say Renee Sunday, okay? <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh my God, it's so funny. So let me ask you this, because of, and, and I, I love to ask this question all the time. But step back into your, uh, your pretty much you being a teacher and loving, you have a heart for the youth. What what can we do uh, right now to support and encourage our youth? Because they're seeing so much on TV, they're seeing so much in the streets, and they're seeing so much at school. What can we do? Because, you know, we always see the cliche say, you know, everything starts at home. But what can we do as a as the body of Christ? That's going to make it specific there, that we need to do to empower and help our youth in, this, in what's going on in the world right now. 
Well, the first thing, you know, of course, I'm a, a chief advocate of prayer. Prayer is the first thing to pray um, for this generation, pray for, you know, their issues and concerns. And then the second thing is we have, I believe in that motto of, you know, it takes a village to raise a child or the proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. And I believe it has to be, you know, everybody hands on that. When you see a child, you know, you can talk to them. For that, you have to make sure you're forming relationships with kids because a lot of times it's so easy to just throw a child away. It's so easy just to say that, you know, they're bad and they should, you know, all these things that we say about people, all these labels, and, and, and really it becomes word curse that we speak over kids, um, that we just build relationships, pray first, build relationships with them so they can talk to you and then really start to um, share what's going on with them, to let you know the things that they're struggling with. So then we can, you know, then we can be transparent and honest because had I heard it, had I had people in my life 20 years ago that was transparent with me and told me some of the things they went through, some of the mistakes that they made, I probably wouldn't have made those mistakes. But a lot of times, especially for those who get in the church, if you haven't over, if, if you haven't dealt with shame and rejection and guilt and, 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 and condemnation, all these things that we feel when we do things wrong, if we haven't dealt with that, we won't be so eager to tell somebody what we've done. And I think these, this, this, this generation now need to see real people, not just I'm running around, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I speak in an unknown language, I go to church, I serve, I do all these wonderful things. Kids don't care about that. They want to know, are you human? They want to know, have you messed up? And they want to know, how can I actually get out of this? And we have to give them practical ways on how can I overcome. Because if they feel like they can't talk to us, they feel like they're, that we are so far above them, they're not going to open up. They're going to go to the people that, you know, they feel like they can relate to. They're going to go to people that they feel like look and act like them and get all kinds of wrong information. But if we're praying for them, we're asking God for discernment, Lord, tell me what's going on with them so I can pray for them specifically. Let them open up to me, Lord, so then I can have more specific prayers. You allow me to to see myself, you know, put myself in a position where I will be open and honest with this child so then they can turn around and be open and honest with me and then you can give us both strategies on how we can help this child uh, uh, or how, you know, we can speak life into the child and then really try to get more involved. And this has been on my heart and this is definitely Holy Ghost, but we in the in the body of Christ, I believe we gotta stop looking like the world to win these kids. You know, you know, so many times I see a lot of secular things or worldly things that people bring into the world to try to win the youth. But if they're already doing it in the world, they don't need to come to church to do it. And so we gotta really stick to biblical principles. Uh, um, what does God say about this? And, and and stop trying to to recreate a message that's already there, but really being honest and authentic with them about why this is going to help you and why this is the best way versus um, a different way. Carol Lewis. Now, you know I'm live. You know I'm live right here in the airport, so you hear all that going on. But <laughs> you know I love it. I love it. We just keep pushing forward. But the thing about it is I, I just love in your bio when you said that your uh, one of your main objectives is to teach everyone, and then you want them to be empowered, you want them to be educated, and want them to be equipped. And I and I think you said that so amazingly in your statement about the school system, because we have to, and I even say this in my prayers for the principals, the teachers, the everyone that touch hands to the kids or be around the kids, that they'll realize that they're part of God's plan, and they actually supposed mm-hmm. to be there to empower them and motivate them. But I think sometimes we, we unfortunately, with our selfish motives, I just say it that way because it's true that we, we, we miss the focus of what we're supposed to be focused on, and it's to empower pretty much everyone around you. You should be empowering them. So I, I, I'm i with you on that. I, I, I'm i not a, a teacher in the school, but I love to empower uh, kids because I know the kids, they keep you motivated, man. They keep, and, they, and one thing I really <laughs> love do. about the mo- yeah, uh, the millennials, what I really love about them, the young people, is you just can't tell them something. They want you to actually show in them in the scriptures mm-hmm. and you give mm-hmm. them something. So I like that. Yeah, that's amazing. Yep. So let me ask you this. Um, 
in regards of uh, in with your business, um, let's get back to that. With being a student teacher, I think you mentioned briefly, but tell us again how uh, who's your target market and um, the the educational consultants that you do in regards to your business. So my target audience are parents, uh, mothers and daughters, and educators who just want to get some spiritual, biblical, practical principles on how they can infuse all of that into their classroom without infringing on any kind of laws, without feeling like they're going to get fired from their job, without feeling like, you know, I am doing something wrong. And so those are that's my um, my target audience. What was your second question? I didn't hear the second part. No, I think I was saying in regards of with that being said, uh, what programs uh, do you do mostly a uh, uh, group or one on one? Oh, what oh. type of clients are you accepting? Oh, okay, okay. So yes, I do one on one coaching. I'm actually going to give away a free one on one coaching session this Saturday at my book sign. So I do one on one coaching. I do group coaching. I have a mother and daughters program helping mothers and daughters fortify their relationships um, with one another. I do affirmational writing for people. I do uh, birthday affirmation affirmational writings for people. I do it for educators. I actually every day. And this is the part where you know. The Lord has taught me how to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. So, you know, in the school system, you have to have the use that you have three to five classroom rooms. Well, me and my kids, we have ten affirmations. And, you know, you can kind of read into that what where they stem from. But we say those every day at the beginning of, of our classroom. And so the Lord has just gifted me with the gift, I believe, teaching me how to write strategically. And so um, we said those, so I write those for people individually. I write those for education. I write those for classrooms. Um, so I definitely do, you know, one-on-one clients, and then, of course, we do the group session, sessions. And also out of my first book, there are four programs that I just created for my book, four courses, seminars. They're four-hour workshops. So if anybody's interested, they can always contact me. One of them is how to create a uh, culturally uh, – uh, collaborative culture sensitive environment in your school system. Um, one is called Help My Parents Just Don't Understand. It's geared to young adults, helping them navigate between, you know, life and why they feel like, you know, sometimes adults or parents are just out of touch with them. And then I have another one with the same thing for young adults that's geared from 25 to 40. And then the last program is called How to Have the Heart of a Teacher and not just the knowledge of one, because I used to be that teacher who didn't like kids and kids didn't like me. Um, I was there because I liked the hours and, the you know, the vacation time off without having to take off. Um, even though I knew how to teach reading, I just wasn't a good teacher. And so I see a lot of people, you know, that are still in it for the wrong reason. So I have, of course, teaching people how to have the heart of a teacher. And one thing you said, Dr. Um, Renee, was, you know, you're not necessarily a, a teacher in the school system, but I always tell, you know, parents, you know, you're the first teacher, and an educator is anybody that can teach somebody something. So we may not be necessarily, you know, teachers in a public school system, but I believe we're all teachers, and we really can, you know, teach and train these kids. And so that's what I do in the student teacher business. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, actually, when I do my sermons, people say, oh, my God, you're a natural-born teacher uh, because, you know, you can do the hoop, but you got to make sure – what all you doing, you get understanding. And, and so, yeah, I, I truly mm-hmm. enjoy teaching. Uh, actually, that's uh, one of the gifts I wasn't aware of, but it has been ignited, and it shows in the things that I do. But I, I love it. I love it. But tell us again, uh, if we have missed anything, please recap that for us, and please tell us how we can contact you for the different services that, and products and services that you offer, and tell us again how we can support you on social media as well. Okay, so to get to um, to go to my services, you go to www.seminarywalden.com. So um, if you see in that Renee's flyer, you can just my first name is my first and last name dot com. You can go and click up under my service and see all my products. My books are there. You can go and purchase the books. The eBooks are on Amazon. The first two eBooks are on. The first two books on Amazon as ebooks. If you want to go to Amazon, if you want to get the autographed print copies, you can go to my website and purchase those for me. You can follow me on um, Facebook, Simone Walden. But my Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we pray, or it's prayer, 
motivation, <laughs> empowerment sessions every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time till about 7.30 um, a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we're always on Facebook at the Student Teacher. Instagram, Periscope is at Seminary Wall, and you can connect with me um, at www.seminarywall.com. You can send me a message on um, Facebook or Instagram or any of those sites, and I will be able to respond to you. And the only other thing is I would just say that any of you guys are in the Charlotte, North Carolina area this, this weekend, this Saturday, from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m., come out to the Panera Bread Meeting Room, um, Concord Mills Boulevard. I'll be there meeting and greeting doing a little um, empowerment session and then signing books and giving away some material that I received from an organization here, um, giving away free my, my free coaching session, um, signing books, booking engagements for my next one, and just really, you know, wanting to love on people who have supported me from day one of, of this endeavor. Wow, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being in your purpose, and we thank you so much for being a guest here with us in Good Deeds. If you need us for anything, please, please don't hesitate to give us a call. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you want to be ready, ready for the replay of this. We just thank you, thank you so much that, you know, no matter what's going on, you got to keep that purpose going. you got to keep it going, going. And, you know, if you want any information about advertising with us, um, sponsorship for our radio, TV, and, and our Good Deeds magazine, and also we have a publishing company and a nonprofit organization, please go to www.reneesunday.com. That's R-E-N-E-E. Sunday, S-U-N-D-A-Y, to get more information. Please always remember, you do have a caller. You do have a reason, one, you were born. You have a reason you're here right now. Do the three things. Believe, trust, and you got to walk it out, right? And you got to don't stop. You got to get it, get it. This is Good Deeds, and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. See you next time. Bye-bye. Napa know-how. Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 500,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. While you're in high school, you can take college courses, earning college credit now. This is the first step toward doing what you love at the Technical College System of Georgia with over 22 colleges and 85 campuses. With dual enrollment, save time, save money, and get a jump start on your college experience. The Technical College System of Georgia. Meaningful careers start here. Visit tcsg.edu to learn more.